And a very rare offer from Attorney General Bill Barr to House Democrats. It seems to be coming in response to the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff saying he would hold a meeting tomorrow to take some sort of unspecified action against the Attorney General for not providing his committee the underlying intelligence related to the Mueller report. Now Barr is saying, not so fast. Maybe we can talk. Maybe we can work something out. CNN's Laura Jarrett broke the story. And Laura, what is Barr specifically offering to Democrats? Well, Jake, the Justice Department is essentially saying, look, we're willing to work with you on this, but there's going to be a hitch. And here's the issue. The House Intel Chair Adam Schiff wants a whole slew of documents related to the counterintelligence aspect of the special counsel's Mueller's report. It's a redacted report, obviously, and he wants some very sensitive documents. And so the Justice Department is saying, we'll start pulling those categories of documents, but you have to withdraw this unspecified enforcement action that you were going to take against the Attorney General Bill Barr tomorrow. Schiff hadn't said whether it was going to be contempt or some other sort of civil fines or, or something else like that. But they're saying if you take down that threat, we're willing to work with you on the documents. No word on what Schiff is going to do with that, though, Jake. And Laura, there's also been this question about whether or not Mueller is going to testify uh, publicly. You've just learned uh, some of what's behind the delay. What is it? That's right. And what we're sort of learning here is there's delicate dance going on between the special counsel's office and Capitol Hill, who've been you know behind the scenes negotiating for several weeks now. And the special counsel team is expressing some hesitation, reluctance about having the special counsel, Robert Mueller, testify publicly. It's unclear whether he could do it sort of behind closed doors in pieces or in full. Chairman Nadler, the top Democrat on the committee, won't talk about the negotiations. But rank and file Democrats tell my colleague Manu Raju today, that that is not an option that they think is viable. They think the American public should see him testify publicly and that they deserve to know the full story here, Jake. All right, Laura Jarrett at the Justice Department. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Let's chew over all of this with our experts. Uh, Karen Finney, let me start with you. Sure. Mueller, it seems like he's willing to testify in private. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the Democrats who are saying that's not good enough are right? Uh, is that the right approach? I mean, they can have him appear. Well, certainly I think it's the right approach until they are satisfied that should he appear and should they get all of the underlying evidence that they want to make sure that they see as part of that. I think that has got to be part of the bargaining, you know, the back and forth that they're going through. And obviously Mueller is you know, right to have some concerns uh, about he thus far has done very well in staying out above the fray. And so I think his testimony is incredibly valuable. But again, I think it's a there's a bit of a bargaining going on here. Caitlin, do you think that Barr and House Democrats actually might be able to come to sort of any agreement here with all the tension and, and competing interests? Well, that's the question here, and it's going to come down to those competing interests. And if the Justice Department can find it in their favor for him to testify or meet some of the accommodations that Democrats are making, they could be open to it. Because so far, Bill Barr has said publicly, let Bob Mueller testify. So that's the question here. But so far, they've been pretty hesitant about this. And the key factor in all of this is that Robert Mueller is still a Justice Department employee and has still been going to work ever since the release of the report, though Chairman Adler said last night on television he wasn't ex sure exactly what it was that the special counsel was doing. In the meantime, calls for impeachment among Democrats are ramping up. You heard Congresswoman Val Demings just a few minutes ago. Obviously, not everyone's on board today. Minutes apart, two California Democrats gave CNN two very different answers on impeachment. Take a listen. The president of the United States of America needs to be impeached. We don't need impeachment um, at all to be able to move forward with the, the investigations. And just a few seconds after that, a third California Democrat, the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, said this. Have you How do you address a division? We don't have division, Pelosi said. Maeve, obviously I mean, there's division. <laughs> I think it's called cognitive dissonance. Yeah, yeah. Th obviously there's division there. And, you know, I mean, just looking at uh, Katie Hill, for example, who was one of those voices there saying we don't need to go to impeachment right now. I mean, she's in a very divided district in California where there would not be uh, a lot of support for impeachment going forward, <laughs> whereas uh, a lot of these other uh, people like AOC are not facing that same
same problem at home. And so it just shows you, you know, how fractious this debate is. And Pelosi's obviously thinking about how she holds on to yeah. that majority in the House and is trying to look out for the best interests of, of those members like Katie Hill. Yeah, Jake, you, you, you heard uh, you heard Manu's questioning of AOC and she said, we shouldn't be scared of elections. Who, who's afraid of elections? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy for her to say, you know, like a in a plus 90 D district, right? But right. I can tell you he's afraid of elections. Nancy Pelosi's afraid of elections. <laughs> and she scuttled into the, you know, into the caucus there saying, oh, we don't have any division. Division, what are you talking about? You know, so, if there's lots of Democrats are afraid of elections, <laughs> including Connor Lamb, including, you know, um, I could take maybe about six or seven other Democrats in Pennsylvania. You know, I think the one person we should not discount in all of this is Nancy Pelosi. She's done such a phenomenal job, both handling the president and his foolishness, as well as keeping this caucus together. And I think part of what you saw, Jake, even in the lead up to our segment here is, I mean, we've heard members, different members of Congress also saying, look, the more the White House is stonewalling, that starts to raise the specter of maybe we have to go to impeachment to get these documents. Even the question about whether or not Mueller should testify. Now that we have a decision that they have to turn over. You know, a judge has ruled they have to turn over these financial documents. So I think part of what it, they're actually yeah. stepping on their own feet at the White House, because the more they obstruct, the more Americans are going to be asking, well, what are you hiding? The more I think people are going to say, well, gee, if that's the only way that Congress can get the information they need, okay, then maybe there should be that investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Karen, you know what? You know what? Here's what, here's what undercuts that argument, right? I watched Please this, tell I, me. I watched this morning. I, I watched this uh, the, this this uh, the spectacle this afternoon with Doug Collins following Nadler, and, and Doug Collins makes a good point. He says, you know, look, Chairman, you've had the opportunity to go read the full unredacted Mueller report. You haven't even done that yet. None of your colleagues think, have done that yet. I it, believe. Well, I, some of them have. I, I, I believe that Nadler say. hasn't read it because he's still protesting the fact that it's not fully yeah, but, but so, unredacted. But I don't believe it. it, it but doesn't David, I don't true. think you're that correct. That is the full unredacted report. I don't believe that that's what's on the well, table. Well, uh, look, I, I so believe. Let's be, well, well, okay. Let's, let's do facts. Let's, okay. Let's, so, let's so deal okay, facts, you're correct. The national excise. It's blacked out for national security or grand jury. Correct. But he hasn't. He hasn't taken him up on on going over and seeing it as expansive copy as he can see. So I think the American people say, look, what, what's going on with the 81 document request you set out before? I mean, you just keep mm -hmm. throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. I mean, I think that's what Americans so, are seeing happen in the Judiciary Kate, Committee. Caitlin, take a listen to Manu Raju talking to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who supports impeachment. I want to play that sound. Are you concerned with Pelosi's approach to this? You know, I, I trust the speaker is taking a, a measured approach to ensure that we're moving everyone forward. I know that, you know, being a speaker is hard. Holding this party together is a difficult task, but I think that we know what we need to do. I, I personally believe that I think we have to move forward. So, Caitlin, uh, not, Nancy Pelosi is not the only one walking a tightrope. There's AOC praising Pelosi while also saying that she disagrees with her on this. Yeah, and that's a big thing. You're seeing the White House try to capitalize on this division among Democrats over whether or not to move forward with impeachment. But also we're seeing that kind of surface a little bit in the Republican Party with Justin Amash saying yesterday that uh, saying that what the president's actions do do warrant impeachment. And that's something that you saw Republicans quickly come back and reprimand him and say that that's not true. That's not how they feel. But you're seeing what the behind the scenes, the White House and the Trump campaign are waiting to see what other Republicans have to say about no. that. And if anyone else breaks ranks to agree with him. Yeah, but Justin Amash has been Justin Amash has disliked this mm. president while he was he was still a candidate. He's not this is nothing new. Justin Amash well, has been saying he, he would impeach Trump before he was president.